All right, I'd like to talk to you today about five different types of fasting. Many people think, when they think fasting, they think of food, and that certainly is there, but there are other types of fasting that are in the Bible. And the interesting thing about it, when we study this, you'll see that all of them are related to the devil, attacking the devil, and the devil attacking back. It's a very interesting study. I wasn't even aware of that. Uh, when I first started to do the research, but then I started to see each verse points to the devil attacking or being, a, uh, you know, us attacking the devil or him attacking back. So first of all, we'll start out with food. That's the one that most people think of. All right. Secondly, we will think of intimacy in marriage. I'll show you the scriptures. It's not you know, it'd be better to say abstinence or something, but, you know, if I say abstinence, people wouldn't think of fasting for food. Well, I guess you kind of would, but number three would be um, laughter. You can actually give up laughter for a spiritual purpose. We'll look about the scriptures. Number four, we have time. And number five, the final one, we have money. Okay? Five different types of fasting. Food, intimacy, laughter, time, and money. So let's get into the scriptures now, and we will see about all these different five things here. Matthew chapter 17. Go there in your King James Bible. It's going to be very important for this study. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a little bit. Matthew chapter 17. And uh, beginning in verse 14, Matthew 17, verse 14. All right. The Bible says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. That's interesting there. It's kind of a little bit of a spinoff on modern people. He's a lunatic. No, he's possessed with devils. <laughs> I wonder how many diseases, you know, mental ailments now are just people possessed with devils. But they'll say, could you please cure him? No, it's called casting the devil out. Funny how people try to rationalize things like that. Um, verse 17, Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. There he cast the devil out. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye, had, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21, Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. When you give up food, that's what it's talking about, fasting. Now here's the interesting thing. You see, if you used a new version, if you're saying, well, my NIV is just as good, or my New American Standard Bible, or my English Standard Version, or any of the other satanic garbage from the Vatican, you wouldn't have verse 21. So what are you talking about? Verse 21 is not found in the uh, two oldest and best manuscripts, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, if I remember correctly. Huh. So the oldest and best manuscripts remove a very key verse there to casting out a devil. I wonder why they would do that. Hmm. But you see the first instance here of it. Here you have, and you can look at your new versions, by the way. They'll all call the verse into question because they're inspired by devils. But this is the first one here that you see. There's a devil, and it's attacked by prayer and fasting. They lose power when you are praying and fasting. And, you know, the interesting thing is, Modern, you know, health trends and whatever else, they talk about intermittent fasting now. That's a big trend out there, that this is really good for your health and everything else. Uh, and they have the science to prove it. I'm not just saying it's some trendy little thing that nobody knows what they're doing. No, they, they can prove it. Fasting is actually good for you. Not just good for your prayer life, but also good for you or, or, uh, health-wise, your health, nutritionally. 
pretty amazing. Let's look at the other one here, Mark chapter 9. The uh, an another retelling of that of this incident here, Mark chapter 9, uh, also beginning in verse 14. It's amazing to me how that uh, people can think that these new versions are updating uh, this old archaic language. Um, Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Uh, you need to update that by taking the whole verse out? It's ridiculous. Mark chapter 9, beginning in verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. So here's, here it's actually giving a different retelling of it. And, you know, this in this case, what Mark's hearing is, he's actually hearing, no, this guy understands it's his son's possessed with the devil. Verse 19, He answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought, un him, they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this child, or since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. That's a really good admission right there of how fragile we are as people. Uh, I believe in Jesus, but yet there's those times where there's some unbelief, isn't there? Well, I believe the word of God, but yet there's times that you have some unbelief. Mm -hmm. Verse 25, and I'm saying it about myself too, by the way. When Jesus saw that the people came to running together, he rebuked the foul spirit and said unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as, he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto him, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And of course you see it back in the Pauline epistles where you have Paul talking about in, in fastings often and everything. So it's a New Testament practice. So you can't say, well, it's in the Gospels. It's kind of Old Testament before Jesus died on the cross, so we don't have to do it today. Um, well, the devil would like you to come to that conclusion, but uh, not the Lord. You should be fasting and praying. That's an important thing there. And when you're dealing with things in the spiritual realm, um, you can't just be in a just, oh, whatever, you know, kind of a happy state. You have to afflict your flesh a little bit. And you do that through fasting. And also through the next one. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Now we get into the thing of a married couple. Um doing some spiritual warfare against the devil. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and we'll begin in verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the, the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband... And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, here it is, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Huh. So you can actually add to it as a married couple by abstaining from the marriage bed. That's correct. And come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Don't do it too long. Don't abstain from the intimacy in marriage for too long. But if you add that to the thing of prayer and fasting, where you're saying, okay, we're not going to give pleasure to our flesh. 
and you put that down and you say, okay, we need to have some answers to prayer here. We need to fight the devil's system. Let's abstain here from this. You have some power there. It's all about putting down the flesh. I wonder why the modern churches like to appeal to the flesh. I wonder why the modern churches would use new versions that take out this kind cometh not forth but by prayer and fasting. Huh. And the charismatic kooky nuts that are out there, these, you know, modern churches and things, oh, they put their hands up and, oh, let's praise the Lord. Oh. And they use the new versions that take out a verse that tells you how to cast out devils and have power against the spiritual realm. Hmm. Next, let's go to James, the book of James. You know, it's, it's interesting when you read the Bible, King James Bible, you know, the Bible, I'm saying. Um, you start to realize why the modern Christians, professing Christians, reject this book. You start to realize um, how accurate this book is. It describes them perfectly. James chapter 4, beginning in verse 7. The Holy Word of God, the perfect Word of God, the King James Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Get into context here, resisting the devil. How do you resist the devil? Prayer, fasting, abstaining from intimacy and marriage. And here's another one. Verse 8, Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Now you don't have to go Old Testament with it, you know, getting down in the ashes and putting ashes on your head and putting on, you know, uh, a burlap, you know, type of clothing or whatever else, sackcloth, you know, and ashes. You don't have to do that. But the whole point is there are times when you just need to mourn, when you need to be afflicted, when you need to, see, need to see the condition of the world and you need to weep over it. When you need to just say, God, I'm so, oh, I can't believe that this is going on. These people are so wicked. Oh, Lord, it just, oh. you know, a lot of you younger people, you have no clue what it's like to live in good times. You really don't. And you say, oh, you're being worldly. No, you don't understand. The foolishness of youth comes out of your mouth sometimes. And you say, we're, you're just being worldly and you're not, we're not supposed to get along with the world. It's never supposed to have been good and whatever. You don't understand what it's like to have a society that's more Bible-based, you know? Like at Christmas time, you go into the stores when I was a boy, and they would have actual Christmas hymns playing. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, O Come All Ye Faithful, you know, good songs like that. And now a lot of you dumb pagans out there, you actually think that you should fight against those hymns because they're associated with Christmas, and Christmas was pagan and all this stuff. Um, and you know what? Things were a lot better back then. There was a lot less crime. It wasn't perfect. Okay, I'm not stupid. I understand that. But um, it was a lot better. And I'm 48. A lot of you out there that are watching me, you're a lot older than I am. You lived in even better times than I did. You're probably saying, brother, you know, you were raised in the 19, late 70s up into the 1980s when you were a boy. You should have seen it back in the 60s or the 50s. I'm sure. I'm sure it was a really good place. Why? Because people had more knowledge of the scriptures. Saw a video yesterday, some guy is a firearm instructor, and he said, there's an old saying that says about what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? It's an old saying. I don't remember where I heard it, and I thought, <laughs> uh, it's not an old saying. It's the Bible. It's Scripture. But see, people have become so heathen in this nation. They've become so pagan, they don't even remember. You know, the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Do unto others as you should have them do unto you. Well, that's based on some of the words of Jesus. They twist it a little bit, but you know, People don't even realize that our culture, our language, our English language came from the scriptures, the King James Bible. Now they say it should be rewritten, the professing Christians. And the secular people out there, they quote the King James Bible all the time and they don't even realize it. You know, that you're in good hands with all state. You see the two hands together. Where did they get that from? You know, uh, fear it's a, uh, about being in the hands of God and things. No man shall pluck them out of my hand. Uh, there's all kinds of things like that that they take from Scripture. And now it's part of our culture and people just go, oh, I hate the Bible. Then why are you quoting different things about it? 
different sayings, English idioms and things come from the King James Bible, not the new versions. Do you ever get afflicted? Do you ever mourn? Well, not in my church. We have Christian stand-up comedy night at my church. We have comedians come to the church. And it's there in the modern churches. I'm not going to put up any images or pictures or whatever. You can just Google it, you know, or do some kind of YouTube search. And there's stand-up comedians at Christian churches now. These modern satanic little buildings with lost people going to them. Yeah. It's a big funny joke. You know, and oh, oh you say, well, yeah, these modern Christians, they are wicked. I agree, brother. Amen. Preach it, brother. Amen, brother. Preach it. What about the Baptist churches? Where the Baptist pastor goes around and he has his little memorized sermons, you know, from his little sermon barrel, and he goes around and he and he has a little joke that kind of starts off the sermon, and then he tells another joke later on and whatever. They do stand-up comedy too. Just with more yelling and things involved in it. See, that's why people hate me so much, because I attack everybody. I'm very ecumenical in that. I don't, you know, hold back. I attack everyone. I believe all, you know, professing Christians should be attacked in some way, shape, or another. <laughs> but, uh, brethren, there's times when you should give up laughter. There's times you need to be serious. Don't be a jesting fool and always looking to make things into a joke and funny, funny, funny. This world is a very serious place. Every second somebody's dying and going to hell. And this nation is under God's judgment and under God's wrath, and it's going to get very bad. And you might be tortured to death. I might be tortured to death. We have no idea. Maybe you should start to take some things seriously, you know, and afflict your soul so that you can attack the evil system out there. Maybe if Christians had actually fought against things during the pandemic, it wouldn't have gone the way that it did. Remember somebody, one of you viewers out there, and back when I was standing against it before I, you know, before my speech was censored here on YouTube, I remember one of you said, brother, you are the only one preaching against this. You're the only preacher that's, that's preaching against this whole thing. That's sad. That's not, oh, of course, because I'm the, the best. That, that saddens me. That saddens me that there aren't other Bible believers out there that would stand up against this whole thing. Next, we have time. Number four, let's go to the book of Ephesians. Brother, I, I would love to attack some of this stuff, but boy, I'm just so busy. I just don't have the time. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17. The Bible says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Watch what you're doing. Be afflicted. Think about what you're doing. Prayer and fasting. Verse 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. That's very important, especially now. We have to redeem the time because the days are evil. You know why the days are evil? Probably because over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it talks about, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. It goes on to say some other things there, lest the light of the glorious gospel, you know. But I'm just going to focus on that part. The God of this world has blinded people's eyes. You know how he does it? Through television, through organized religion, through academia, through the medical establishment, through all those different things, through the banking industry, the financiers, the usury people and everything else. All these people that want to get you into debt so that they can control you. You say, oh, oh, this is ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. It's the truth. Because you see, um, brother, I, just, I don't have time to do much for the Lord because I have to get to work because I have bills to pay. Hmm, yeah. I have a career to think about, brother. I mean, I, you know, what about my retirement? Yeah, what about your retirement? Your heavenly retirement. What about that? Are you fighting the devil? Well, brother, over the years, I found out that if I don't fight the devil, then he won't fight against me. You know, go along to get along. You know, don't rock the boat. Just keep your nose to the grindstone. You won't get anybody riled up or whatever. It's not the way it's supposed to be for Christians. 
we're supposed to let the Antichrist system. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Hinder them. Slow the system down. Fighting. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Colossians chapter 4. Go a few books over there towards the back of your Bible. Coloss Colossians chapter 4. Verses 5 through 6. The Bible says here, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Hmm. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. There should be grace there, because you're such a wicked, rotten, filthy sinner before you got saved. Um, so you need to have grace for people. You see some freak walking by with blue hair and rings in its nose or something, and it doesn't know if it's a man or a woman. Well, have, try to have a little bit of grace. But you know, it also has to be seasoned with salt. Hey, uh, wicked sinner, can I tell you about Jesus? <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, you are a wicked sinner. I was too. You should have seen me back before I got saved. I was maybe not as big of a freak as you, but, uh, you know. <laughs> um, grace, but seasoned with salt. Why? <clears throat> Redeeming the time. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. There are some people that have hardened their hearts and whatever else. It's going to take a train wreck for those people to get saved. Don't waste your time. There are other people that are just, they've been messed up by organized religion. They don't want to hear about it, whatever. Okay, just drop a few seeds, walk away. Some people say, yeah, I've been thinking about this. What are the seeds? Walk away. It's not your position to say, I'm going to lead them to the Lord. I will be the one that saves their soul. No, you won't. And a lot of times when you push that stuff, your little you know speeches and things and your special little you know, thing that you can control somebody into praying a prayer or making a confession of faith, all you're doing is just creating a lost convert. False convert, I'll say it that way. That's all that you're doing. Your job, my job, plant seeds, water the seeds, God gives the increase. That's what our jobs are. But we're to redeem the time because the days are evil. Um, is it a uh, type of fasting? Yes, it is. Because there's a lot better things to do than try to witness to people and, and get out there and do work for the Lord. There's a lot more fun things to do than that. Um, there's a lot more fun things to do than sit here for an hour or half hour or whatever else and watch some idiot in a flannel shirt trying to tell you about the Bible. There's a lot more entertaining things out there. You know, I mean, I realize if I had multiple camera angles and if I had animation coming up and Hollywood movie clips or whatever, man, it'd be a lot better and background music and all these other neat things. Like a lot of people do, you know, on YouTube. And I, mean, I feel like a lot of the, the videos I see on YouTube are, are made for autistic children or something that have an attention span of about two seconds. You know, I see these people and they're speaking and it's just, they just constantly, they're cutting the camera angle and they're, you know, changing into, the, you know, these, just changing all the time. You can't get some guy standing there for half an hour speaking. Some do, you know, there's some decent channels on YouTube, but you know what I'm saying? Um, Drives me nuts. But finally, let's go to the last one, which is money. Philippians chapter 4. Go back one book towards the front of your Bible. Philippians chapter 4, the last chapter in the book of Philippians. And we'll begin in verse 15. And read down to verse 19. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, which... When I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. Paul didn't have too many people supporting him. Um, For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. That's why you support a ministry, by the way. It's not because the ministry is trying to get rich. It's because you look and you see a profitable ministry that's getting things done, that's not compromising, and you say, you know what? I want to support that ministry because I want to have rewards in heaven. Things that, are, that will abound to my account. Hey, you know what? I think I'm going to invest in the stock market. Okay. Says your stockbroker, what would you like to invest in? You say, well, what businesses seem to be failing right now? Uh, well, um, you know, real estate's doing pretty bad. You know, a lot of realtors are falling apart. Uh, it's, it's going down pretty bad. Hmm, yeah, let me, let me invest in that. Let me put a lot of money into that. No, 
You say what industries are doing good, what businesses are doing good. I want to put my money into that because I want to expect dividends coming back to me. That's just common sense. You know, let's go to the races and, and uh, not saying to do this either. I'm not for the stock market. I'm not for horse racing. But you go to the horse race and you say, which horse looks the sickliest? I'm going to put my money on that horse. Well, there's one that can barely walk. It was injured, just broke its leg, and it's just kind of, and they're going to run it in this race, you know, because they have to. I think I'm going to put all my money on that one. You know, no, don't do that. Oh, here's a church building. It's just dead. They're doing nothing, but it's just a social club and things. I'm going to go help them pay their mortgage. And that will wind up how in heaven? Oh, that's right, uh, being burned up at the judgment seat of Christ, wood, hay, and stubble. You have to sacrifice, brethren. Let's see about that. Verse 18. Uh, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. One of the big reasons why American Christianity has fallen so far. The biggest reason is of right here. Okay, let's bring in the Vatican versions. Again, please understand, if you don't understand the Bible version issue, this is not an old archaic Bible that needed to be updated. This is a Syrian Bible that goes back to Antioch, Antioch in Syria. Okay, that's the issue here. The Vatican has always had their counterfeit version, which is based on Gnosticism and other things. It's why they take verses out, like the one in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. They've always had that one. So we had an old Latin Vulgate at one point in time. Then you had Jerome's Latin Vulgate. Then you had the uh, William Tyndale, the Tyndales come out. And Martin Luther came out with this line of Bibles. And then you had the Catholics come out with their Dewey Reims of 1610. One, one year before the King James Bible was completed in 1611. See, it's two different competing Bibles. It's not old archaic versus now it's been updated. No, the new versions are not updated King James Bibles. They're different Bibles from a different part of the world. They're Egyptian Bibles. This is a Syrian Bible. Okay, that's the whole issue here. So the devil comes in and he says, I'm going to take away the King James Bible from most people. Now you have people just saying, I, I think I heard at one point there's something about gaining the whole world, losing your own soul. It's an old saying. I, I have no idea where that comes from. I think I've heard the thing about going out in the highways and byways. I don't know where that came from. And they'll say all these other quotations that come from the King James Bible, not really realizing our culture here in America and our language is based on this book. And that's why America is falling apart. But there's another reason. And that is because the devil came in with his little servants. They're the little financiers and, and things, unfortunately. Most of those being papal Juden, like I've talked about in other studies. Jews that serve the Pope, in other words. And they've mingled okay, with other races and also the other religions so that they don't even really qualify to be Jews anymore, whole other study. But those people, and, and I'm not joking. I mean, you look at them in the finance world, it grieves my heart because I try to defend the people of Israel. I, I try to defend the nation of Israel. And yet there's a Jew here and a Jew there and they're in this whole thing. And what the anti-Semites do is then they say, see, I can prove, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, the, one of the founding guys from the Paul Warburg. Warburg one of the founders of the Federal Reserve, he was a Jew. He was a Jew. A lot of these guys are Jewish. And you look and you say, well, see, I can prove Jews, Jews, Jews. And then they say, all Jews are bad. No, that's not the issue. Okay, it's like saying all, all Americans are for the wars, the foreign wars of aggression that this country has been in. No, that's not true either. All right, you can't condemn all the people based on a bunch of them being rotten. But what's happened is they've come out and they've designed a whole artificial world you can have a house, any house that you want. We'll give you the money for it. Of course, you don't realize we're actually charging you three times the original purchase price to buy that house once, once the interest payments are done, but you don't need to know that. And we'll put you into our schools and we'll teach you evolution theory that there is no God and, and all these other things. And, and then you can be entertained by our Hollywood actors, our adjusting fools. And you can drive famous, fabulous sports cars and, and oh, and, and have a pretty wife and let's go out to eat and let's go to the movies and let's get, and it's this whole artificial world. And it messes you up. And Christians, they stop fighting. 
They don't abstain from food. They don't fast. Most. Intimacy. They have sermons and seminars on, on sexual relationships at these big churches. Challenging them to be more active in the bedroom or something like this. Laughter. Christian comedians. I remember there was some, some uh, Christian, Christian guy at a Methodist church my parents used to attend, and he said, I don't understand how people could ever be depressed. He said, I enjoy my life. I just, I don't know what sorrow is. I'm just so happy all the time. I just, I laugh at everything and everything's just a, a wonderful, life is wonderful. Well, you probably ought to get saved then and understand how bad this world really is. I mean, Jesus was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Paul said a continual sorrow. What about the book of James that we read earlier? Are you afflicting your soul at all? Or uh, No, no, no that's, that's, I don't like that. That's yucky. These modern churches are filled with people that are on antidepressants. That's a problem. Time. Do you have time to serve the Lord? Well, you know, you know the game's coming on here pretty soon. I mean, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Come on, you can't expect us to skip the Super Bowl. I mean, you know, most people that, you know, they used to leave the church buildings and they'd go home and watch the Super Bowl, and now they do it in the church building. We'll have Super Bowl Sunday night. And money? Are you kidding me? Give money to real ministries? <laughs> Not going to do that. I'd rather build our multi-million dollar mega center over here so we can have, uh, you know, get the proper copyright, you know, clearances and things so we can play sit clean uh, scenes from movies, clips from movies, Hollywood movies, and have some, some sissy britches up there in, in tight pants, skinny jeans or something telling you life messages from certain portions of scriptures and six different versions that all contradict each other. pretty disgusting. Finally, let's, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Here's a good one. This is one that the uh, modern professing Christians, they don't like this one. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24 on the issue of money. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Well, except for certain things. I mean, should we be that dogmatic? Maybe we could rewrite the Bible. You know, let's go to the Greek and see if we can kind of tweak the words a little bit with our Greek definitions. And if we can't find it in, in one, uh, you know, Greek uh, lexicon, we'll try to find it in another. And, and we'll just say you cannot... Um, serve God and mammon unless it's in certain the words of Jesus Christ are crystal 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 clear excuse me they are um, you can't serve God and mammon if you're going to amount to anything as a Christian you can't make your whole life about saving up for retirement and all the money and everything else and the right investments and you need you need to be thinking about eternal things and um I'll just be real blunt. This ministry has had to struggle along a lot over the years because a lot of the viewers just simply don't give anything to this ministry. I'm just being honest. And I've known other ministries as well. I've known a lot of preachers down through the years and they'll say the exact same thing. It isn't unique to me and whole oh, Brian Dunninger suffers more than anybody else. No. Uh, a lot of the good ministries out there, they have very low funding. Christians are too busy uh, doing other things with their money. Um, and you know the interesting thing there? It doesn't say that uh, you, can, you can't serve two masters you know, because you'll prefer one over the other. It says, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. If you're making money your whole purpose in life, then that means you actually hate God. Did you ever think about that? A little conviction to you there you say so then you're, we're, you're saying in order for us to not hate God to, to prove that we love God then we have to give to you Brian no you have to give to a ministry you have to give something back to the Lord if you're not in ministry yourself and if you're in ministry you know try to find something to do to give some of that money back to the Lord how much um, fasting are you doing are there times when you have such a serious prayer that needs to be answered that you go without food if you're a married couple 
Are there times that you set yourself apart? You say, you know what? Uh, let's just hold off on that. Let's put down our flesh. Hey, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm having a need here, but you know what? Let's just hold off because we have to have an answer to this prayer. And for a time you do, not too long, so the devil doesn't get you. But you give yourself to, you stop this, to give yourself to prayer and fasting. How about laughter? Are there times that you sincerely weep for this country? That you sincerely weep and get down on your knees and say, God, please judge this nation. Lord, please stop these wicked heathen. It's getting so bad. A lot of people are being hurt and killed and whatever else because of the wickedness that's continuing in this nation. God, please stop it. God, please stop these modern version churches out there that are making a mockery of us. The lost world is blaspheming because of these, what these modern professing Christians are doing. They look at them and they laugh. I told the story of a church building many years ago um, that the people, the neighbors, actually called the police on the church building. You know why? That was because the church, they were out there, they were witnessing for Jesus Christ and the, and the lost people around the church, they got upset. No, that's not why. It's because the church building, their music was so loud that it was shaking the people's homes. Imagine that. It's hard to even think about that. And I've been to those places. I've gone past these modern churches. Um, we tracked the parking lot on one the one time. A couple of them, actually, but the one, the real big one in Pennsylvania. And you could feel, you could feel the beat of the music outside. You could feel it outside. Not just hear it. Feel it. Feel it in your chest. And that's of the Lord? No, it isn't. And those goofballs, they're all about laughter. And uh, time, time to serve the Lord. Giving up my time to come and actually, you know, I, I realize they come in and they do their little volunteer to sweep the floors and to help with the gardens and, you know, whatever else. But I'm talking about actually serving the Lord. Actually doing something for the Lord. Some study and, and witnessing to people and, and things like that. Oh, I don't have time for that. And how about the money? Well, brother, I mean, I have bills to pay and I've, I'm so badly in debt and everything else. So I really don't have a whole lot of extra money. How'd you get to that point in time? So that's going to be it for this study. I hope it's been a challenge to you. Um, there's a point in, of, in, uh, there's a point at which you should be fasting. You should be abstaining, afflicting your soul, doing things like that, mourning and whatever else. Um, but always remember that that's a time period. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on the earth, he fasted for 40 days, but then he stopped. Okay. This is all great stuff, but don't do this to the point where then the devil starts to come after you. Like that one right there says, the devil tempt you for your incontinency. Um, there's a point where you can say, okay, I've done all I could. Um, People that have given to this ministry, they say, brother, I gave as much as I could. Thank you. I get that a lot from people. I wish I could give more, brother. I wish I was a millionaire. I'd love to give you more. Well, praise the Lord. You gave what you could. You did what you could. I appreciate that. I appreciate your prayers. Thank you for that. But make sure you have some of this in your life. If you're not doing any of that, make sure that you're uh, fasting somewhat. If you're married, Sometimes give up some of that. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, especially right now. Your time. Spend your time. Uh, brother, I have all these questions. And th well, I've answered most of the questions in my videos. Spend some time watching the videos. Sacrifice your time. Don't watch a bunch of junk. Uh, highlights from 1973's football or something. Uh, no. Spend your time studying the Word of God and your money supporting a, a good ministry. doesn't have to be mine. Whatever ministry out there. So that is going to be it. Um, for this, a uh, bunch of new studies coming up. We're going to be doing more studies here at our property because we actually have a wood stove here and I'm warm um, down at the office. I was, I'm a little bit late on this study coming out because I was trying to heat up the office. It's been really cold and it's, you know, six, seven hours of time with my three little electric heaters to try to heat up the office and it just, it gets about to 50, 54 degrees and that's it. And that's just, you know, I can do a study in that 
but you know I like to be able to do a study actually with a shirt on and not you know winter coats and hats on and all kinds of stuff so uh, I'm gonna be doing a bunch more studies in the future some big projects that I'm working on so uh, please do keep us in your prayers but that will be it thank you very much for watching we'll see you in the next video